Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about Tetralogy of Fallet. Hi, my name is Shangla Pundu and I will be hosting the video today. Tetralogy of Fallet is the most common cause of congenital cyanotic heart disease in neonates. Now we will see a normal heart versus a heart in Tetralogy of Fallet. Now in this figure, you can see this is an image of normal heart and this is an image of heart with Tetralogy of Fallet. Now as the name suggests, Tetralogy means four deviations from normal heart, which are first one is your narrowing of the pulmonary valve. As you can see in the figure, it is also called as pulmonic stenosis. Second is your thickening of the wall of the right ventricle which is also called as right ventricular hypertrophy. Third is your VST or ventricular septal defect. That means the septum is not formed properly and there is mixing of blood. And the final is your displacement of the aorta over the VSD that is also known as overriding aorta. The risk factors of TOF include chronic infection of mother during pregnancy, torch infection, we all know toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus and herpes infection, preterm delivery and if mother age is greater than 40 years and if the mother is suffering from phenylketonemia. The prevalence of this disease is 5 out of every 10,000 babies. The clinical features include low APGAR score after birth. So I already made a video on APGAR score. Click on the I button to see that. Second is your cyanosis. So you all know if there is low APGAR score, there is most likely chance of CO2 accumulation in the body and that cause cyanosis. Third is your fatigue. So as there is CO2 accumulation, oxygen concentration in the blood is low and fatigue is a common thing. Then is your heart murmurs, growth retardation and poor appetite. Now in these children, hypercyanotic spell are common, which is a sudden decrease in oxygen due to acute, almost complete obstruction of the subpulmonary outflow that may be triggered by crying, defecating, playing, etc. Now to diagnose this, you first need to check baby's clinical presentation, which includes all the clinical features that I already mentioned earlier in this video. Then is your physical examination, which includes auscultation and detecting any heart murmur. Then is your diagnostic tests which includes ECG, chest x-ray, SpO2, EKG, cardiac catheterization, etc. The differential diagnosis includes pulmonary stenosis and tricuspic atresia. Medical management of tetralogy of fallot. So it includes correctional surgery which may be an open heart surgery or may be a shunt which is used as a temporary procedure. Post-surgical management include management of cardiac arrhythmias using antiarrhythmic drugs like amiodarone, lidocaine, etc. The preoperative physiotherapy management includes patient and family education, the tube IV channel and its care. Now for patient and family education, you can check my video on high risk baby. Now for post-operative management, the goals include to increase the pulmonary function, to mobilize secretions, to increase addition and to increase the general mobility. Now to prevent atelectasis, you can do yawns maneuver, you can increase inspiration time and you can use incentive spirometer specially made for the baby. To increase segmental aeration, you can use segmental breathing techniques, you can use exercises with or without pressure that elicits a stretch reflex that facilitates air flow to a particular segment. Now to clear the lung field, you can use postural drainage techniques with percussion and vibration in gravity assisted position. You can use suctioning, you can use cuffing techniques with protection of the incision site. Then you can also use MHI or manual hyperinflation techniques. Now in this photo, you can see a baby is treated with manual hyperinflation technique. Now to prevent muscle atrophy and muscle guarding, you can use range of motion exercises for thoracic spine hand shoulder complex and foot ankle complex. Now to prevent pulling of secretion in dependent parts of lungs, you can use positioning techniques. Here are some images of that positioning techniques. Other physiotherapy interventions include management to correct the posture, group therapy and protection of the incision site. Now this is a reference image for management to correct posture. Now I have used this book of cardiorespiratory physiotherapy by Prayar and Prasad as my reference. 
Okay, so that's all for the video. Now you can also join me on my Telegram channel where I upload all the physiotherapy notes. You can also join my Instagram and Twitter handle where I share contents on physiotherapy. All the links will be provided in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.